So all of a sudden, the internet and the world has become interested in the apparitions of Our Lady at Garabandal. And it seems like this group, Marta Spey, is largely behind it. And they seem to be linked to the religious order Ogar de la Madre, promoting the apparitions at Garabandal. And one of the big parts of this has been the feature film Garabandal, Only God Knows. Garabandal, Solo Dios lo sabe, which released, I think, a year ago now. And I bought the film when it was released quite quickly. As soon as it was available to order from Spain, I ordered a copy and I've watched it, I think, maybe five times now. And I just thought I would just share a few thoughts on the film. So the film follows basically the account of the head of the police in the town of Garabandal at the time of the apparitions. This guy who's head of the police, who you can see in this picture here, the second figure in of this picture here, here, this man, the head of the police, who's stationed in Garabandal during the time of the apparitions. And the film is more or less set from his point of view and his experience of the apparitions. So it's a, it's a, diff it's a different take on the apparitions. It's not focusing primarily on the children and their families or the, the parish priest and, and his relation to the bishop. It's primarily focusing in on the point of view of this member of the Guardia Civil in Garabandal. And he's a focal point, and the whole of the Garabandal experience is seen from his point of view. And I think this was a really good approach. It gives a fresh approach to the apparitions of Garabandal. There's negative, a negative side to this. The negative side is that although we learn a lot about this member of the police, that happened to be in Garabandal at that time, we don't actually learn too much about the children, about their families, about how their families reacted to the apparitions, about the divisions between the different families of the, of the children that, that still exist to this day in, in many ways. We're focusing in on this police officer, his relationship with his wife, their marriage, uh, his his job and and, and the kind of tension between being a good police officer, being a faithful Catholic, keeping order in the village, obeying the bishop, obeying the parish priest, being um, true to, to your own conscience. It plays on, on these tensions by following the, the point of view of the, the police officer in Garabandal, responsible for maintaining law and order in the village. But as I said, in focusing on him, we lack any kind of real focus in on the children. And here is the, I don't really want to throw in all the negative points at the beginning, but it seems to flow, as I've just mentioned, the children. Perhaps the single most disappointing thing about the film uh, is the fact that the, the children are played by these grown uh, women. Um, although the four children were age 11 and 12 at the beginning of the apparitions. And instead, we've we've got women in their 20s playing the visionaries and i guess i guess you can suspend your disbelief a little bit uh, uh but there's some there is something lacking through the fact that they didn't have child actors in terms of the acting performances overall i found the performances really convincing of of the other characters that is there's this problem here with the with children being played by by 20 year olds but overall all the other acting in the film is really convincing it's superb considering that that these actors are very very they're hardly known at all i think most of them have just volunteered they're amateur amateur into amateur dramatics and they've turned up and they've put together a really fantastic film where the, all the performances are very convincing the chief uh, police officer very convincing the parish priest don valentin you know he's he pulls up a great performance because uh He's exactly the way I imagine Don Valentine to be, a kind of lovable, fairly simple parish priest who quite quickly comes to accept the truth of the apparitions, and that puts him at odds with his bishop. But he's a kind of simple parish priest, and he really doesn't like the fact that he has found himself at odds with his superiors. And then on the other side, 
we have the performances by the bishop and it seems to be the bishop's secretary the man that he's he is made responsible of looking into the the course of events at Garabandau and these two especially the second the bishop's secretary he has a really negative aura you know he's a bad guy from the second that, that you see him but he pulls off the part really well and dr morales the doctor who is is responsible uh, on the first commission for investigating the children i mean his performance is really fine and it's is really believable he's he's there um sitting in the cafe smoking his cigars not really following the events of garabandau just kind of chilling out enjoying himself so Right, the guys at Mata Spey, the people involved in uh, the Order Ogar de la Madre, who are firm believers in Garabandal, of course, they're really emphasizing this, the fact that the first commission headed by Dr. Morales really wasn't doing its job properly. And they contrast it by having another, they present, I mean, it's, a tr it's true how, it, how the events came to pass. There's another doctor who's not part of the first commission, but he happens to be there in the time of the apparitions. And this doctor is depicted in this film and he's a true believer. He's a true believer from science and from his own personal experiences. He's quite certain that what the children are going through cannot be some kind of psychological hysteria and it's not Conchita doing a hypnos hypnosis trick on the other three girls and it's it's not some form of epilepsy so they they present this other doctor in Garabandal who, who is a genuine figure and genuinely was there and believed in the apparitions became convinced in the apparitions so the film is a defense of Garabandal a defense of what occurred there and one of the really clever things about the film is it addresses head on the fact that the seers would all later at one point or another deny that the apparitions occurred and for someone who for anyone who's getting into Garabandal or learning about Garabandal this is one of the things that quite quickly can disturb you that the four supposed visionaries a little point later as they got into their late teens and 20s and some of them on and off through their lives have gone through moments of denying the apparitions occurred and the film meets this challenge head on again through the voice of the the chief of police there he is basically repeating a refrain well he comes to repeat this refrain as as the film uh, reaches its conclusion that even if you and he's talking to Conchita, even if you ever are to deny the apparitions, Conchita, I can never deny what I have seen. I can de never, never deny what has taken place here at Garabandau. These things are true, even if you deny them. And so he's kind of the voice of the producers, the director, the devotees of Garabandau, who, who know all the events that occurred there. And, and even if the children deny they happened, there's so many witnesses who have seen them occur, even if the children have suffered some kind of doubt, maybe a supernatural, supernatural uh, phenomenon that they are, they are experiencing something of the doubt that the church is having in the truth of its own doctrines. You know, that's how it can seem at some time. So, so the film meets on the challenge, meets head on this challenge that the children would later deny the apparitions. Another thing that the film meets head on is the fact that the, the children sometimes faked ecstasies. They pretended Our Lady was appearing to them sometime. And I mean, that is again, really disturbing. I was so glad they included that in the film because it's the kind of thing that's so embarrassing, you would be tempted to just sweep it under the carpet, but they meet it head on. And they make it they make it clear that the the regulars from the village who saw these faked ecstasies identified that they were faked ecstasies and they challenged the children about them. They said, What's what was going on there? You know, this was not like one of your normal ecstasies. There was something not right about this at all. What are you up to? And so so they they identify the fact that the locals realized that the fake ecstasies were fake and thereby proving that all the others were genuine.
So the film doesn't shy away from some of the more negative or challenging aspects of the apparitions of Garabandal. In terms of things the film is lacking, some people are going to be disappointed that the film has no mention of the warning, the miracle, the chastisement. That doesn't feature in it, except that little bit in the first message, you know, where the children do prophesy a chastisement. But there's no mention really, no details of those prophetic things that are part of the Garabandal message. But as I mentioned in my review of the documentary, the documentary really does go into detail about the prophetic side of Garabandal. In terms of the visuals, the camera work is, is fantastic. The sound is excellent. And the location, although they haven't actually filmed the film in Garabandal, they've used a part of rural Cantabria that looks pretty similar to Garabandal and those of you who've been to this holy village will will almost think wow this is recorded in Garabandal it wasn't but you know it's, it's very convincing it looks very similar to Garabandal and there are a few shots at the end of the film of the pines and of a pilgrimage taking place to the pines showing that all this stuff that happened in the past continues to this day people are continuing to encounter Our Lady by visiting Garabandal. Again like with the documentary I have a bit of an issue with the title they've chosen in English anyway it's very strange Garabandal only God knows is it trying to say only God knows whether these apparitions are true or not is it, you know, it's a rather strange subtitle for the film. It's not a refrain that the, the children used to used to use, or it wasn't a refrain in any of the early material on Garabandal. No one was saying, only God knows whether this is true or not. So it's strange that they have, they've come out with this as a subtitle. But, you know, I'm not sure what subtitle I would have chose for the film, to be honest. I mean, there's a million things you, you could have used, perhaps something like, well, the, the title of the, the famous set of books, Garabandal, She Went in Haste to the Mountain, or maybe Garabandal, The, the Continuation of Our Lady's Visitation, or Garabandal, Our Lady Visits Her Children, or Our Mother Visits Her Children, The Mother Visits Her Children, or Garabandal, Mother of God and Our Mother. That was a refrain that the children used to say, mother of God and our mother. I don't know, but I wasn't entirely convinced by the subtitle that was chosen. So a uh, summary. Overall, I really enjoyed the film. As I said, I've watched it five times, I think now, and, and I still enjoy watching it. It's made up of of lots of little testimonies trying to convince you that the apparitions were true. And all of the testimony, all of the historical evidence save put in the film is genuine these are these are all stories that you will find in the Garabandal literature they haven't made things up in order to create a convincing film to try and convince you of the truth of these apparitions these these things that are presented in the film are actually part of the canonical history of Garabandal and they've included some of the shadow side of Garabandal. What they haven't done is they haven't left it in the balance. The film is very much loaded towards convincing you that it was definitely supernatural and there's no other explanation. The, the climax of the film is when this guy, Dr. Morales, at the very end of the film, we're transported to the event of, of a press conference some years later when Dr. Morales reveals that he now believes in the truth of the apparitions at Garabandal. So the guy that was spearheading the first of the commissions investigating Garabandal, the one that was a bit of a joke where Dr. Morales was smoking the cigars, sitting in the bar, this commission, this leader of this commission now says publicly this is really significant, is important, as important a set of apparitions as Lourdes and Fatima. And he says that he believes it and they should be well known and they should be studied properly. 
And again, that seems to be the refrain of Marta Spe, of Ogar de la Madre. They want Garibandao to be studied anew. And I guess ultimately they wanted to be studied and found to be a true apparition. I think that this film is going to bring a lot more people to visit Garibandao. And I think it's going to make a lot more people interested in reading up about the apparitions of Garibandao. I think it is something that, like I've said previously, I'm not 100% as to whether they are completely true apparitions or not. But the more I read about them and the more that I found out about them, the more I'm intrigued, the more I'm drawn in, and the more that my heart wants to return to the pines, the more I want to visit that small village in Spain once again. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen.